next up on the Cosmic News Network, The Cosmic News with Dirk Bradshaw. Johnny B. Free for FreeNLA.com. Just reminding you that uh, it's actually free to go see the Rose Parade. Don't get caught up in that $180 for a ticket. If you're willing to spend the night, you can sit there on the curb for free and watch the entire Rose Parade free. That's a hint from FreeNLA.com. That's FreeNLA.com. Flying high above the planet Earth, this is the Cosmic News with Dirk Bradshaw. Brought to you by CosmicNewsNetwork.com. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, it's time for the greatest show on Earth. That's right, it is the Cosmic News with Dirk Bradshaw. I am Dirk Bradshaw, and tonight I'd like to talk to you about a dinner party I went to just the other night. And, uh, well, of course, it's always inevitable. As soon as the uh, six-foot-one gray alien walks into the room, there's a zillion trillion... Oh, yeah, that's right. Six-foot-one, in case you didn't know, and uh, I should take care of a lot of those misconceptions that all of us gray aliens are small. But, um, yeah, the moment I walk in the room and the shock is over... There starts the inevitable questions of, uh, you know, what's my planet like? Uh, what's this like? How's this? How's that? And of course, the biggie: How did I get here? Well, I'm not one of those uh, those brainiac aliens that you see in the movies that are six billion times smarter than any earthling. No, I, I guess I uh, I got the height and not the brains, the good looks and not the smarts, the brawn and not the brain. But what I do know is I got into a commercial grade. UFO, as you like to call them, and uh, the captain pushed a button, and within about, I don't know, a couple Earth hours, here I am. I don't ask any questions, I just do it. And I've been doing it now for quite some time. So tonight, hopefully, we can resolve that question once and for all. We've got those brainiacs here to discuss how aliens get here. That's the question we're asking right here on the Cosmic News. There are plenty of places from which E.T. could originate. Physicist Lawrence Krauss believes that the most likely place for E.T. to call home would be on a planet similar to our own. Life seems to form ubiquitously, relatively easily in conditions like this. So we, we would expect one simple way to find life would be to look for planets like Earth. The problem is that any such planet is going to be a long, long way from Earth. Outer space distances are so vast, they are measured in light years rather than miles. One light year is a distance of nearly six trillion miles. That's the distance traveled in one year by a beam of light moving slightly in excess of 186,000 miles per second. Light from our own sun reaches Earth in about eight minutes and takes another ten and a half years to travel to the nearest known planet outside of our solar system. Any alien planning to visit us from this planet faces a round trip of over 120 trillion miles. The only way to shorten the duration of such a journey may be to go faster than the fastest thing we know in the universe, light itself. In 1905, Einstein laid out special relativity. And in that theory, you cannot go faster than the speed of light. There's a cop on the block, in some sense, that says you can't break the light barrier. Einstein's theory of special relativity suggests that there is a cosmic speed limit preventing anything and any alien going faster than the speed of light. However, in 1916, 
Einstein created an even more powerful theory, the general theory of relativity. It opens up the possibility that instead of beating the laws of physics, the answer might be to get around them. Theoretical physicist Michio Kaku believes that this holds the key to breaking the light speed barrier. Space-time is a fabric, a fabric that can be stretched and compressed and perhaps even ripped. That might give you the possibility to break the light barrier. Einstein's theory proposes that matter causes space-time to curve. Imagine a heavy ball on a rubber sheet. The ball's presence causes the sheet to distort into a hollow. If a smaller ball is then dropped onto the sheet, it will spiral toward the heavier ball. Einstein theorized that space, like the rubber sheet, is warped as objects travel through it. And if space can be warped, then there may be a novel way to travel from one side of the galaxy to the other. If you have a sheet of paper, a straight line is the shortest distance between two points. However, there's a loophole. If you are to fold the sheet of paper, then you realize the shortest distance between two points is actually a wormhole. Some scientists suggest that wormholes are space-time tubes, which act as shortcuts connecting distant regions of space. Theoretically, an alien using wormholes could travel between two parts of our galaxy faster than a beam of light could travel through normal space and time. It's a shortcut first described more than 150 years ago by a mathematician in Oxford, England. That man was the author known as Lewis Carroll. Alice's Looking Glass connects the countryside of Oxford to a fantastic world called Wonderland. And if you were to put your hand through the looking glass, your hand would leave Oxford and go to the other side of forever. That is a wormhole, what we physicists call a multiply connected space. Wormholes may be the ideal transportation network, but manipulating the laws of physics could bring catastrophic consequences. We don't know how stable they are. It may be quite radioactive. There may be quantum corrections and radiation as you enter the wormhole, or perhaps it will close up even before you can enter. It may be possible to artificially create a wormhole, but it would take enormous energy and advances in technology way beyond our imagination to rip through the fabric of space and time. But maybe there's an alien civilization so advanced that they can build these supergalactic highways with ease. Intelligent aliens may also have found another trick to navigate around the universe. Perhaps they can actually move space itself. As far as we know, space can do whatever the heck it wants. It can expand in response to the presence of matter and energy. If we could somehow harness that, then in principle you might be able to develop something we might call a warp drive. The alien craft would collapse the space in front of it and simultaneously expand the space behind it. In that way, the ship would transfer from one part of the galaxy to another without actually moving an inch. It may sound like the stuff of science fiction, but for some advanced aliens, it could be science fact. I can show you with this balloon. I have a little replica drawn of the USS Enterprise uh, from Star Trek. And just so you know the local surroundings, I have the sun here, I have the moon, Saturn. And what I want to sh show you is that, is that the, the Enterprise could travel away from this star system and towards this star without ever moving with respect to its local surroundings. How can I do that? Well, if I squeeze the balloon at this end, then I expand this region of the balloon. The distance between the, the starship and these stars has increased, but the starship hasn't moved at all with respect to its local surroundings. And so what I've done is I've had space do the work. Nobody knows how a warp drive might be powered. And Krauss believes that its use would be fraught with danger. It may not be dangerous for the participants in the spacecraft, but it'd be pretty dangerous for everyone else. Because when you contract space in front of you, you literally crush everything between you and the nearest star. When you expand space behind you, you, you put incredible tension in everything around you. You'd have to have an interstellar highway where you cleared out everything in between, because otherwise you'd destroy basically everything around you. 
Our own technology is nowhere near sidestepping the laws of physics. But an alien civilization that has evolved a million years ahead of us might already have found a way. Earthbound physicists who are looking for life take this idea very seriously. They have devised a system to categorize alien civilizations according to how advanced they may be. When we physicists look in outer space, we don't look for little green men, we look for type 1, type 2, and type 3 civilizations. A type 1 alien civilization would be so advanced, it could harness all forms of energy on its planet, including oceans, volcanoes, and even the weather. They would soon exhaust the power of a planet and use the energy of their local star. At this stage, they would be categorized as a type 2 civilization. Eventually, they become galactic. They begin to colonize entire star systems. They begin to have fantastic energies, allowing them to manipulate stars and black holes. That is type 3. Perhaps 100,000 to a million years more advanced than our technology. But where would our own civilization be on this scale? We don't even rate on this scale. We get our energy from dead plants, oil and coal. That's how primitive we are. Our official rating is type zero. We cannot travel across the vastness of interstellar space. However, a Type 3 civilization would have developed the technology needed to control space and time in order to travel freely throughout the universe. You cannot rule out the possibility that an extraterrestrial civilization, perhaps a million years more advanced than ours, have the capability of reaching the planet Earth. Oh, man, I can't believe it's over. Where does the time go? Well, I see the fat lady's off the stage. And she's looking right at me. It's time for me to go put her to bed. I hate goodbyes. So instead, I'm going to say, until we meet again, I'm Dirk Bradshaw for the Cosmic News. Wake up.